How's it going, everybody? Happy New Year. Recently, I watched Soul, the new film from Disney Pixar. This video will have spoilers about the movie Soul, but can you really spoil something that's already rotten? Is there anything more soul-sucking than soul-sucking? Soul wasn't that good. Many plot holes, many things that simply didn't make any sense to me at all. So Joe Gardner falls into a manhole. Been there, buddy. And he sustains injuries so grave that his soul is immediately faced with the great beyond. So Joe Gardner is within seconds of death from injuries sustained from falling through a manhole that was just open on the street in New York. Yet when 22's soul goes into his body, he is able to leap up and flee from the hospital like the goddamn Joker. He's gallivanting around town, he's eating pizza. Why is not every bone in his body broken? Why does he not have internal bleeding and brain damage? If his body was so intact, then how did he almost die? Was he just super afraid of the dark? So anyway, he falls through this manhole and now he's on this conveyor belt towards the great beyond where no one else on the conveyor belt has any reaction at all to having also just died. Joe is somehow the only one freaking out. He tries to run away and he ends up breaking through this dimensional wall or something where he ends up in the great before where he is mistaken for a mentor. So how did all the other mentors get to the great before? Because they were all willing volunteers with name tags. Were they given the option to mentor when they died? And if so, why wasn't Joe given that opportunity? Maybe because he died too suddenly? Okay, well, you know who else was a mentor? Abraham the fuck Lincoln. So Joe steals the mentor name tag of a renowned psychiatrist who just never shows up. Why was there never a moment where that guy just showed up like, uh, that is my name tag? So now Joe is in the before world where he learns that he can't smell or taste or feel anything. Senses aren't real, they're just a construct. So if senses aren't real in the before world, then why does Joe's soul still need glasses? So anyway, Joe and 22 sneak their way back to Earth. Uh, 22's soul goes into Joe's body because it doesn't have a soul. Joe's soul goes into a cat's body, which doesn't make sense. They quickly remedy that by showing a one second clip of the cat's soul on the conveyor belt towards the great beyond. Joe has now killed a therapy cat so that he can play a single jazz show. We don't like that, do we? Joe loves jazz because his dad brought him to a jazz show when he was a kid, so Joe became interested in jazz as a child, which may be the most implausible part of the whole movie. Jazz has been interesting exactly one time, and that's when Rudy Gobert touched all those microphones. So Joe and 22 are back on Earth, where Joe desperately wants to get back into his body so that he can play a single jazz show, which his mother is adamantly against because Joe had an opportunity to get a steady paying day job. Bitch, the show is at night. How many weekday broad daylight jazz shows did your late husband play? Seamstress ass bitch, sew your mouth shut, bitch. Joe and 22 eventually get caught by a two dimensional New Zealand Dwight Schrute character and they go back to the before world. Joe is then allowed to go back to earth where both he and the cat uh, resume living in their original bodies. So this cat is now alive and well, even though its soul has gone to the great beyond. So the cat is now just a soulless cat, which is really just a cat. Oh, I'm just kidding. Anyway, he plays the show to a great crowd, and then afterwards realizes that he's still not happy and never will be. Been there, buddy. Joe goes back home and looks at a bunch of garbage and realizes that he needs to let 22 have her shot on Earth. So Joe starts playing piano so that he can get in the zone so that his soul can go find 22 and apologize to her and give her her chance on Earth. So he then accompanies her to the uh, Earth portal as her mentor because that is apparently standard procedure. Even though the entire rest of the movie there's been thousands of baby souls just jumping into the earth portal without supervision. Speaking of baby souls, why are these souls aging with their bodies that they're in if the whole point of the great beyond is so that the souls can live forever? Anyway, they jump through the earth portal and they're rocketing towards China or India, which statistically is where most of these baby souls are would be going, which I feel like maybe warranted just a quick heads up. Hey, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to find pizza. So Joe then accepts his fate that he's already lived his life and he has resigned himself to now being back on the conveyor belt 
towards the great beyond, ready to accept death. Joe, where are you going, dude? Your body is playing piano right now. The only reason your soul is here is because you got in the zone playing piano. You've probably been playing for hours at this point. You're probably going to get evicted. So your plan is just to enter the great beyond and let your body just collapse dead over the piano that you're playing? Think of all the people you're leaving behind, like Lisa, the woman who you loved who was brought up twice and then never brought up again. Or Paul, your arch enemy at the barber shop who has this huge vendetta against you, which is never explained, even though you're a middle school band teacher. Anyway, I don't know. These are just a few thoughts I had about the absolute dog shit movie Soul. It wasn't my favorite Disney Pixar film, but if I had to rate it, I would give it probably like a 10 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed Soul as much as I did, and I hope that there is an afterlife and a god but seems like probably, probably there isn't. But thank you for watching.